So we're going to look at total product, we're going to look at marginal product, and we're going to look at average product in this video. And we're going to draw the diagrams and we're going to look at how you actually get um, the data. Although you won't be having to work out the data in your exam, it's still interesting to know how the curves are formed rather than just memorising them. So if we um, set up our axes on th these diagrams, what we're looking at is uh, the quantity of the variable uh, factor of production that you're adding. So another important thing to just specify is that we're looking here at production in the short run. Uh, because we're going to get diminishing returns and those only occur in the short run and they occur because there is a fixed factor of production at least one of the factors of production are fixed but as you can see here because I'm drawing quantity at least one of them isn't fixed so I'm going to say quantity of labour here for this one because this fits in with the section that you need to learn on labour markets as well so we've got quantity of labour along the horizontal axes and up the vertical axes we're going to have output. So I'm just going to put O there to represent output. And what happens is if you don't have any workers, you don't produce anything. So you're going to start from zero and you get a curve that looks a little bit like this for total product. So we can see with um, one worker uh, we get one unit of output usually, might not be just one unit of output, might be another number, uh, but what's really important is the relationship that we're seeing here and the gradient of the curve. Now with two uh, workers, we're getting three units of output. Uh, with uh, three workers, we're going to, I'm just going to pretend that that's a little bit further up because it makes my maths a little bit easier. We're going to get five units of output and again, I'm going to pretend that that point is actually there. And with four units of labour, we're going to get uh, one more unit of output produced. And then this additional unit of labour is only going to add a little bit more. And then this unit of labour doesn't add anything really. Maybe even takes away for the production process and so on and so on. So what's happening here is with one unit of labour, um, they're able to produce output with two units of labour. These two workers are able to work together and they are um, being able to produce much more together, working in teams, the benefit of teamwork, the benefit of learning um, from each other. So one unit of labour produces one unit of output. Two workers can actually produce a lot more. They're making three. Three units of labour is making five. I think that's right, yep, five units of output and four units of labour are making six in this diagram and as you can see five units of labour are only adding a little bit to that six so that looks like 6.4 or something. Now if we keep these numbers, if I'm, I'm going to make a little table at the side now and uh, if we have L for units of labour and then I'm going to have TP for total product so that's the output that we're getting from each unit of labour and then I'm going to have marginal product, so the additional output that adding one variable factor adds to total product. Um, and then I'm going to have average product as well there. So let's keep these numbers. So one unit of labour, two units of labour, three units of labour, four, and we'll go up to five. So one unit of labour, the total product is one, we've just worked that out, then three, then five then um, 6 and then we're getting something like 6.4 like we said before. So the marginal product um, between employing zero people and one person is that you're getting one unit of labour. You usually write it in between the lines, your marginal product. The marginal product um, for employing an extra person, so going from one pe person to two people that you're employing, is two additional units of labour, sorry, two additional units of output. Uh, then we've got two additional outputs of um, two additional um, units of output. Um, between three and four people, the fourth person is adding one additional unit of output, and the fifth person is just adding 0 0.4 additional units of output. Now, the reason for this 
is what we um, call increasing returns at first. So from one to two people, we get the benefits of the workers working in teams and working together and learning from each other and being able to be much more productive than if they were working on their own. Um, so we're getting um, increasing returns between one worker and two workers. And um, then after three workers, we're getting diminishing returns. So when we went from two workers to three workers, we had two units of output that that third person was adding. And then when we went to four people, uh, they only added one additional unit of output. Now this is called diminishing returns we're seeing here. Diminishing marginal returns, it's sometimes referred to as well, because it's showing that um, you're still adding to your total um, product. We can see it's still going up. Um, it eventually is going to fall, as you can see, past this point on the diagram. Um, but the additional output that you're getting after a certain point is diminishing. Not decreasing in terms of the total product, but diminishing the additional output that you're getting. Okay, so final part to do is to find out the average product. So all we're doing is we're just dividing total product by your number of uh, workers. So 1 divided by 1 is just 1. Uh, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. 5 divided by 3 is, I've actually got a calculator in front of me, I'm not working this out in my head, it's 1.7, um, uh, 6 divided by 4 is back down to 1.5, and 6.4 divided by 5 is 1 point, um, it's 1 1.28, but I'll round it to 1.3, okay. So what we're getting, I'm just going to draw a little diagram below here um, so that we don't get too many lines. Okay, but I'm still going to follow um, the grid lines from my uh, previous diagram. So if I'm going to do the average product in red. So with one worker, we know it's one. And then it goes up to 1.5, oh, that's just a bit high, 1.7 with three workers, back down to 1.5, and then a little bit lower to 1.3. So this is doing something like that, your average product. And then if I put it in a different colour, your marginal product is going, and you usually plot it in the middle, so that's 1, and then it goes up to 2. Uh, oh, sorry, that's meant to be in the middle. There we go. I just undo that curve. Uh, oops. In the middle there, and it's still at two at that point. And then it's going to go back down quite sharply. Oops, made the same mistake again there. To one, and then it's going to go to 0 0.4. So if I do that curve, there we go, that's my marginal product. And it eventually, the marginal product does fall below that um, zero point on the uh, horizontal axes. And what we're seeing here is when the marginal product starts to fall, we're getting diminishing marginal returns. And um, they're intersecting can see at this point here and this is going to be really significant when we look at the cost curves as well um, but I'll look at that in the next video and that is actually intersecting at the point where if you drew um, a line from your zero point on the first diagram that I drew upwards and this is going to be hard for me to do <laughs> straight because I don't have a ruler uh, but where it's tangential is where it should intersect and um, so you can see it's intersecting just about at that point but if you did do it with graph paper on it or on excel it would be a lot more accurate than my diagram is there